Oh, hi folks, how you doing? This is a very tired Ross Minter. It's still greyer in life, but it's all change. So what are we doing today? <clears throat> well, what have we done today? So tired that I uh, can't even get my words out. Basically, we're having a whole new allotment rejig. I've decided it's about time that um, I organise my allotment ready for getting older and disability and everything else like that. I've noticed the last few months that when I'm walking around things are a bit tight and I've stumbled a few times and things like that and I need wider paths basically uh, and I want higher raised beds so everything is going. So as you can see, we're starting to clear everything out now. All the wooden raised beds are going to go. Uh, some of them might get reused um, over in like the wildlife area where the pond is, but the majority of them are going to go. Uh, and I'm going to have everything, uh, either metal or plastic or brick or something that doesn't need repairing as often. And I'm going to have a good height so I can stoop or perch on the edge of them uh, and use my trusty stool so it's a lot easier. I'm also going to get more weed fabric and put it on top of the bark. Uh, and then I might not even cover it. I might just have weed fabric down as paths uh, so I can sweep them and keep, keep, keep them tidy. But as you can see, I've really been cracking on lately. The raised beds are going. Most of them, as I've got them out the ground, just fallen apart. So uh, I'll probably try and save some wood uh, just for repairing the chicken coop. Um, for instance, this bed here. That's pretty solid um, and that'll probably get reused for wildflowers and stuff over by the pond area over there. But the rest of them is going. Crates I'm keeping because the crates are a perfect height and they're dead strong, really, really strong. Uh, well, they've, you know, they've designed to hold like a ton of rubble. So they'll be all good once they're lined out. But, but everything else is going to go. The log will go over into the wildlife area. But it's surprising how much space I've got. And uh, fingers crossed, get all this done over the autumn and winter, ready for the springtime, and I'll have better set up to grow more food. So watch this space, folks. Uh, if you're interested in what to do when you get an allotment, then the next few videos are going to be for you. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to rejig the whole allotment. Um, I need to make it more disability friendly for myself. It's not going to be an accessible garden by any means so if you're a wheelchair user or anything else don't take this as like the gospel of like how to do it it's my allotment it's not a public space the only people that access it is is, is me and at this moment in time i'm going to make it accessible for me um i don't want big wide paths for mobility scooter access all the way around uh, i thought about it and i just thought i'm going to lose too much growing space all those wooden raised beds are going to go i have thought about buying raised beds to replace them um but it's kind of against my ethos of allotment in uh, in some respects because i like like to recycle and upcycle and everything but i'm finding that as my condition gets worse and as i'm getting older those simple jobs of repairing things is becoming a little bit more difficult not massively difficult but just but it's it, it's starting to get to me now so maybe in 10 years time i'm going to really fit you know have a problem and so what I want to do is I want to get well ahead of myself. So if I get metal or plastic beds or something like that in now, or big thick wooden beds that will last 10 years, then I'm, I'm way ahead then. And at the moment, at this time in my life, doing a little bit, half an hour and an hour most days, I should be able to get it done. But in 10 years time, I might not be able to get this job done. But I've also found that um, my upcycle and recycle like lifestyle down the allotment, which is awesome and i absolutely love it to pieces is becoming harder just hooking up the trailer to the back of my car 
because it weighs a bit and positioning it and moving it by hand and things like that it's becoming hard work it is becoming hard work now i used to think nothing of going places and picking up freebies hen houses greenhouses sheds bricks anything to use in the garden allotment and i could do it you know take my time over the course of an afternoon and i could load up you know things and that was fine i'm struggling now i am really struggling um I mean, I had some bricks or some paving blocks that I went to collect all oh, about four, no, it was a bit longer than that, but it would be just before lockdown. And there wasn't very many, actually. There was probably a quarter of a ton. And it took me like two hours, no, longer than that, actually. It took me about three hours to load them up and unload them. And I mean, with little, little blocks like that. And I just couldn't do it. And then I was, I was dead on my feet for about two, three days after that. So I've got to stop that. I... I know in myself I've got to stop it so that's led me to think that now is the time while I still can do it is to rejig my allotment and get it prepared for the next 10 15 years maybe I mean I'd like to be down here for for as long as possible look I'm a realist I know that by the time I get to 50 or 60 I might not be able to be down here okay simply because the walking from the car um, you know, they're getting in and out of the car, unlocking the gate and all that kind of thing. It, it nags at me. It really does. And it sounds sounds daft this, but the best way of, of putting it to people is I get pain every second of the day. Sitting here now talking to you, I've got pain. I've got it in my neck, in my elbow, in my shoulder. I can feel it at the base of my spine. Um, it's, it's, it's okay. You know, I don't want to make a martyr of myself. There's plenty of people in worse pain than me. But it niggles away, it niggles away, it niggles away, and it peck, 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 pecks me. Uh, and then all of a sudden my body goes, I've had enough. Ugh. And then I have to rest for like two days uh, because I'm, my, you know, my muscles are literally just exhausted and they've had enough. And you know I do sport. You've seen my walking football videos. You, you know, I do exercises and that. I'm trying to shift a bit of weight. But it's a, battle. It's a losing battle, basically. My condition's never going to get any better. It, it, at best, I can hope it stays the same but it won't okay so it's time to plan ahead so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get some raised beds in i don't know what to get yet and i'm going to make them so i can perch on the end of them you know my ethos for this i've got them at home i've shown you i can perch on the end i can sit on the end i can weed and i find raised beds a lot easier for me it doesn't work for everyone uh, but for me they're fantastic but also it will allow me to do better with my no dig because i haven't got to worry about ground weeds and stuff because i can cover the area more um I'm going to put a load of weed fabric down uh, on top of the bark paths and this, that and the other. I am thinking about just leaving those bark paths as they are with the weed fabric uh, so I can just sweep them, clean them and carry on. Because I don't want to put bark on top of the paths and then the weed sow seed. Bark's been amazing for me. It's been fantastic and I've loved every minute of having bark paths rather than gravel or slabs or anything else. It's been great. It's great for wildlife. It's great for the chickens. The downside to bark is... That when you get it delivered you've got to hump it and i've got to hump barra after barra from the top or if i can luckily get it delivered down here i've still got to hump ton after ton onto the plot and again i just can't do it i, ju I just can't do it anymore it's time to nip that in the bud i'm still going to get bark for a little bit for the chickens a little bit for other people but the days of me having a fully bark path and redoing them every couple of years i think it's gone Think it's gone now i can't really do it as well as i used to and i don't really want the agra anymore because it puts me in days worth of agony so when i get these raised beds what i'm going to do is i'm going to have the one side of the allotment by the greenhouses is going to be for my as you know it's going to be for my vegetables and things like that i grow my potatoes in pots now and they do so much better in pots than they do in the ground and that's another reason backtracking on myself that's another reason why um, I want to do raised beds is because the soil here is so wet. Even in the summer, it's wet. In the winter, it's ridiculous. You've seen it flood. Watch my previous videos. It, it's it's crazy. So the raised beds are going to raise everything up by at least two foot, and that should mean I prolong my season a bit more. The ground as it is now uh, is absolutely soaking. Even though we haven't had, you know, loads of rain, we've had a few heavy showers in the last week or so. But the ground's absolutely saturated. Um, and there's certain things, if I plant them now, they probably just rot away. So the raised beds are going to help with things like that. The other side of the plot is still going to be the orchard, as I call it. It's still going to be the fruit forest or the food forest, whatever you want to give it a name for that. I've got four apple trees there. I've got raspberries. I've got black currants, gooseberries. Um, yeah, you know, all those kind of things. That's going to stay it is. 
that's probably still going to have a bit of a bark path around it because I can just I can just weed that quite easily with a hoe uh, and rip out the worst weeds. And also, I let the wildflowers go nuts that side. You've seen it; it all goes overgrown, and I absolutely love it. I know probably a lot of people don't, but I love it when it gets overgrown with the burdock and the poppies and the Californian poppies. Uh, what else we got there? We've had the radish flowers. We've had calendula. We've had pff, what else have we had? corn flowers asters oh you name it all these wildflowers have just popped up and it's amazing and the animals and insects love it because that corner of the garden is a thriving hive of activity for absolutely anything in the summer and even if you go there now you've probably seen i've got a wee mouse he's hibernating away in his little tire and so i'm loving all that and that's going to pretty much stay as it is bar from a tidy